That's right. So let's say we have here. So this is all when this is well, both of these are when the frequency is high, high enough to get some electrons free. So here's kind of a summary of the important results that they got. When the frequency was low, no electrons were freed at all, even if they ramped up the intensity very high. As long as the frequency was low, no matter how high the intensity was, not a single electron was freed. And this seems bizarre because the intensity could be, I don't know, a million joules per second per square meter. They're putting in tons of energy and they're still not getting any electrons out when the frequency is low. On the other hand, if the frequency was high, then they did start getting the electrons. And then once the frequency was high, they could experiment. Once they're getting electrons free, they could experiment with then increasing the frequency even more or increasing the intensity. Well, once you're getting some electrons free, if you increase the frequency even more, um, then you keep getting higher kinetic energy um, per electron. On the other hand, once the frequency is high enough for the electrons to be free, if then you increase the intensity, now finally the intensity has an effect. Until now, we haven't seen any effect for the intensity. But once we're at this threshold, say, once we're past this threshold, um, increasing intensity now does have an effect, but it only has an effect on the number of electrons. It doesn't have any effect on the kinetic energy per electron, which still seems weird. It seems like we saw from our predictions previously, it seemed like the intensity should affect both the number of electrons and the kinetic energy per electron. But it turns out that intensity only seems to have an effect on the number of electrons freed, and the frequency seems to have an effect on the kinetic energy per electron once we get past this uh, threshold. So there's lots of things here that are weird. Um, the weirdest thing is that the frequency has an effect at all. In the, the, the classical picture, the frequency shouldn't have any effect. It should just be the amount of energy per second per square meter. So um, again, these were experiments that were being done, I guess, in the late 1800s. Um, and finally, somebody figured out um, what a good explanation for this would be. And actually, it was uh, Einstein that figured this out. In 1905, he came up with a good explanation for this photoelectric effect. Uh, of course, um, what Einstein is famous for is relativity, but this is something else that he discovered because uh, we're not covering relativity. All right, but Einstein gets in even uh, in the quantum physics. All right, um, so what was Einstein's explanation? Well, Einstein's explanation was to say, well, no, um, light can not only be thought of as a wave. It should also be thought of as a particle. Uh, and I don't know if he came up with this name, but we can again call the particles of light the photons. I've already put that in here. All right, so the classical people wouldn't have thought of photons, but now Einstein was saying, no, the light the light is made up of a bunch of different photons, a bunch of different particles. Well, that already means that it's starting to be quantized, because particles are separate from each other. Instead of a continuous uh, beam of waves, we're getting photons, which are all separate from each other. And the energy of the light, then, is packaged onto separate photons, is the key idea. Each photon carries some of the energy of the light. Each photon is carrying uh, some of the energy. Maybe I won't work with this. But anyway, so how much energy is each photon carrying? Well, Einstein came up with this equation to describe the energy of a photon. This is going to be a key equation for the rest of the course. Let me uh, fill this in a little bit more. So this is telling us
So this is pH. This is important because this doesn't tell you the energy of anything. It only tells you the energy of photon. It's very common for people to try to use this in the wrong places. For example, this doesn't tell us the energy of electrons. This tells us the energy of photons. The energy of the photon equals H times the frequency of the photon. Okay, um, so E here is standing for the energy of the photon. F is the frequency of the photon, and H is Planck's constant. So uh, Planck, a couple years earlier, had already used the Planck's constant to explain something else. I think he used it to explain black body radiation, which is something else in the chapter that you're going over this week. So Planck had already come up with H to explain black body radiation, and then Einstein stepped into this explanation for the photoelectric effect. Uh, let's actually look at what the number is for this. It should be in your uh, front cover of your book. Good. And what were the units on that? Oh, sorry. Uh, joules. Joules times seconds, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, joules times seconds. All right, so that's our Planck's constant. So if you know the frequency of the photon, um, then this will tell you how much energy each photon is carrying. If you know the frequency, this will tell you how much energy each of the photons um, is uh, carrying. So this tells us how the energy is quantized amongst the photons. So, um, let's see here. So we could say we could plug into this. And let's say we plugged in and we got, let's just say that the energy per photon um, was, say, five electron volts. Per photon. Let's say we plugged in the frequency and we did Planck's constant, we got that the energy was five electron volts per photon. And let's say we were shooting light with an intensity of 100 electron volts per second per square meter. Well, then how many photons would be hitting each square meter per second? That would give us 20 photons per second. square meter. So the classical physicists could see here that we're delivering energy <coughs> at a rate of 100 electron volts per second per square meter. What they didn't realize is that that energy was split up into five electron volt packets. It was actually being delivered in separate, non-continuous five electron volts packets, uh, say 20 per second per square meter. All right, so now we should be able to see how Einstein was able to use this to explain all these various facts about the photoelectric effect. So suppose, for example, that we have a work function here. Suppose that the work function here is, uh, say, 7 electron volts, or let's say 10 electron volts, a work function of 10 electron volts. All right, and let's say that we shoot this light over here. We shoot this light over here. Um, now, the key thing is that the energy can only be delivered in uh, a packet of photons per photon. A photon can deliver all of its energy, but it's only delivered one photon at a time. Well, can a photon here free one of the electrons? No, it doesn't have enough energy, and the photons are not allowed to gang up. The energy transfer is quantized. So we can't just say that uh, two, electrons hit the same, uh, two photons hit the same electron. So since each photon here does not have enough energy to free the electron, uh, and therefore this would be the case um, where no electrons would be freed. No electrons would be freed. Now let's say that we shifted to an intensity 
of 200 electron volts per second per square meter. But it's still the same frequency light, so each of the photons still has 5 electron volts per photon. So how many photons per second per square meter would be, would be shooting now? Now we'd be shooting 40 photons per second per square meter, because 5 times 40 is 200. 